a 24 karat reader, Another Fables, Stories of Self-Discovery by Maxine Harris, a publisher's the Sidring Institute Press from Baltimore, Maryland. Today's story is The Wizard's Message. It was a warm summer day and Tran had been climbing in the hills near his village for many hours before he stumbled on the remains of what looked like an old cottage. It appeared as if the roof had collapsed a long time ago and the walls of the cottage were now overgrown with vines and quite a variety of weeds. Known for his curiosity, Tran could not resist the opportunity to explore, especially since he did not recall having seen these exact remains before during his frequent climbs into the hills. As he poked through the rubble, uncovering a piece of broken pottery or a shard of colored glass, Tran recalled the stories of an old wizard who had lived in these hills a long time before. Perhaps I have found the wizard's cottage, he thought. Who knows what magical charms might be hidden beneath all this mess. And with that thought, he began to dig through the rubble with more determination. After many hours, Tran grew tired and decided to stop and rest. As he prepared to stretch out under a tree, he felt something sharp sticking out from the ground. With a little digging, Tran managed to remove a large piece of stone, almost like a tablet. As he examined the object, Tran was surprised to see how smooth the surface was, despite years of being buried and forgotten. Holding the heavy stone in both of his hands, Tran observed that it bore an inscription carefully carved in a script that his people had not used for many years. Remembering the lettering he had been taught as a boy, Tran read the cryptic message, Never Give Up. Was that all? He wondered as he turned the stones over to see if there was more. But he found nothing. Only those three words. At first, Tran was disappointed with his discovery. He had hoped that the tablet would hold the clue to some magic charm, or perhaps a map that would lead him to buried treasure. But as he repeated the three words over and over in his mind, Tran became more and more excited. I have discovered the true wisdom of the wizard, he thought. These three words hold the key to success in all things. I will follow the wizard's message from now on. And with that promise, Tran replaced the wizard's stone in the soft earth and prepared to head back down the mountain. The summer turned to fall and Tran went about his normal business, harvesting the last of his crops and preparing to take them to market in the village. He thought little of the wizard's message, although he had copied the three words onto a piece of parchment that he kept in a pouch around his waist, along with his other valuables. As the winter drew to a close, Tran decided that the time had come for him to find a wife. For years, he had admired the shy older daughter of his neighbor, but Tran had never had the courage to say more to the young woman than, good day or good evening. How shall I approach her, he thought. She is so lovely and I am just an awkward farmer. She will surely have no interest in a suitor like me. And then, Tran remembered the wizard's message, never give up, and he began to devise a plan to court the young woman. Tran sent her gifts and serenaded her with poetry. At first, she avoided Tran and refused to answer his many entreaties, but after several weeks, she grew intrigued with this, this suitor who seemed so determined to win her affections. The two began to take long walks and to talk of their plans and dreams for the future. And within a year, Tran and the young woman, Ling, were married. Tran was most pleased with his new bride, but he was especially excited to see the power of the wizard's message. Before I found the wizard's stone, he thought, I would have abandoned my courtship of Ling, and now I have the most wonderful wife. I am a lucky man to know the wizard's secret. I will let those three words guide me in all things. Years passed and the couple gave birth 
<clears throat> to three healthy sons. Tran and his wife continued to farm the land, and every year at planting time, they struggled with clearing the fields of the many rocks that shifted down from the mountains with the winter snows. If only I could find a way to clear these rocks more quickly, Tran complained to his wife. Then we could clear twice as much land and grow more wheat. With a larger harvest, I'm sure we would become quite rich. But I'm afraid it will take a smarter man than I to invent some way to clear these fields. Nonsense, declared his wife. Remember the wizard's message. It has never failed us before, and I'm sure if you keep trying, you will find a way to make our harvest more bountiful. Ling felt completely free to evoke the wizard's message in her mild reprimand of her husband, since the wizard's words had now become the guiding principle for the whole family. Tran and his son spent hours each day trying various contraptions that might solve their problem. After many attempts, they did indeed invent a plow that tossed the heavier rocks aside while plowing the field in perfectly straight rows. With their invention, the family was able to plant the harvest more wheat, and very quickly the family fortunes grew. Tran and Ling and their three sons were now among the richest people in the entire valley. Years passed, and the family enjoyed the benefits of their hard work. In the evenings, Tran and Ling would talk of how lucky they had been to find the wizard's message, and how satisfied they were with their lives. How could we possibly want for more? Tran was often heard asking to no one in particular. Then one day a traveler appeared in the village telling stories of treasure buried high in the highest mountain. The villagers listened intently as the man told of his own attempts as well as those of many others to find the treasure. If so many know of this treasure, asked Tran, then why is it that no one has successfully brought the treasure down the mountain? You ask a wise question, friend, replied the man. The treasure is buried high on a point of the mountain that is accessible only in winter. Whoever seeks the treasure must travel through snow and ice and persevere despite difficult conditions. I guess all of us who have tried gave up before we reached the goal. Of course, thought Tran to himself, because he did not want to share his plans with the rest of the villagers. It is the wizard's message once again. I will seek the treasure and succeed where others have failed, because I know the secret. Never give up. With that thought, Tran smiled to himself and began to formulate his plan for discovering the treasure. After weeks of preparing for his journey, Tran set off to climb the mountains with the blessing of his wife and sons who were convinced that he would return with great wealth. The first part of his climb <clears throat> went quite easily and Tran felt confident that he would soon be a rich man. After almost two weeks of climbing higher and higher, Tran came to a bridge made of pure ice. Certainly this bridge is too difficult to cross, he thought. I will just sit here and rest for a bit. And then he heard the words of the wizard's message sounding softly inside his head. Of course, this is the test, he reasoned. This must be where others turn back. I will cross the bridge and find the treasure. Tran had almost crossed the narrow bridge of ice when the snow and wind began to blow fiercely. Hold on, Tran told himself. You are almost there, just a few more steps. But as he placed his foot on what he thought was solid ground, the snow beneath his boots gave way. Tran reached for something solid but grabbed only frozen air as he fell into the deep and jagged crevasse below. As the weeks and months passed, Ling and her sons grew more and more worried that something had happened to Tran. If he followed the plan he had shared with them, he should have been home just as the spring snows were beginning to melt. It was now almost planting time and Tran was still not back in the valley. With each passing day, the family grew more and more concerned that Tran might never return. One evening, Tran's oldest son proposed to the family that he form a search party and go up the mountain to discover what had become of his father. We cannot all leave home at planting time, so I will take three of my comrades and go into the hills. If father is lost in the mountains, we will help him home. And if he has met with some terrible accident, 
We will bring home his body to be buried here in the valley with our ancestors. Go, my son, said Ling softly. Your plan is a good one, and I wish you Godspeed. Remember to follow the words of the wizard and never give up until you find your father. Trance, son, and his friends began their search the very next morning. They climbed high into the foothills and were about to turn up a steep path leading to the tallest mountain when one of their party noticed a strange shape at the bottom of the steep crevasse. Look, over there, he called to his companions. There is something at the bottom of that gorge that could be the body of a man. The friends looked over the edge of the crevasse and silently began their descent to what all feared would be the broken body of Tran. As the youngest men got closer, it became apparent that the twisted shape was indeed all that was left of Tran's body. His son approached the body first and lovingly said a prayer over the corpse of his father while the others waited. He then wrapped the body in a large leather sheet he had hoped never to need, but had brought just in case. Come, he called. Help me carry my father home. As the men began to lift the body, one of them noticed a small piece of parchment that must have been clutched in the dead man's hand. What is that? asked Tran's son as he reached for the paper. There, written in his father's handwriting, was the wizard's message, never give up. As he held up the paper, tears welled in the young man's eyes. What is it? asked one of his friends. It is the wizard's message, replied the son. It was the principle by which my father guided his life and the fortunes of our family. Let me see that, demanded another member of the group who had been silent up until now. That is not the wizard's full message. Indeed, it is only half of the wisdom he taught. How can that be? exclaimed Tran's son. My father found this message many years ago when he discovered the cottage of the wizard overgrown with weeds and shrubs. He must have overlooked the second half of the message, insisted the man who spoke with such certainty. The wizard was a dear friend of my great-grandfather, and I learned his wisdom from his own lips. Pray then, began Tran's son with a hint of dread in his voice. Please tell me the full message of the wizard. Never give up, began the young man in a deliberate voice, unless the quest is hopeless. The additional reading is the wizard's message. Perseverance and determination are clearly among the keys to success. Often we miss out on an opportunity because we give up too quickly. Yet persisting in a foolhardy or hopeless cause can be as problematic as walking away too soon. Especially in the world of relationships, we find ourselves having to negotiate the delicate balance between abandoning a relationship prematurely just because there are difficulties and persisting in a relationship way beyond the point that makes sense. We may even find ourselves so committed to seeing something through to its conclusion that we become more invested in not being a quitter than we are in a successful outcome. We often find that the decision of when to persist and when to back away is best made when we have all of the relevant information. Thank you for listening today.